Will from UTV Outlaws. Today we're going to be doing a little clutch work. So what do we got going, Tim? <clears throat> All right, so went to Tennessee a couple months ago and had the snap ring come off and it was causing it to the secondary to spin when it was in, you know, park or neutral or whatever. And uh, I found that the C-clip had backed off, had got a rounded lip. So I did a snap ring delete and that solved my problems. But been to the dunes twice, road, and uh, when I got home I just felt like I wanted to take it apart. I always clean it and blow it out and wash the belt, but I haven't took it, took the uh, secondary off in a little while. So when I took it apart, I found that these plastic blocks that wear are pretty war. Let me get a zoom in on that. You can see right there where the, it's got a little mark on all of them. And they're all pretty war, which is a wearable part, and you can get, you know, a, a rebuild for these. Ain't no big deal. Then, I pulled this half apart and looked at it. And this is rounded, grooved, enough to where it's got a little notch right there, wore down, you know. Same thing here. There's a little notch wore down. Mm -hmm. It's rounded. It's scored pretty hard. Same thing here. Mm-hmm. I have not take, taken the helix apart yet, which we're about to do, and see how much damage is done in there. Hopefully it's not too bad. Um, I'm, we're gonna pull the primary off and check that. This has, these two are getting replaced. There's no fixing this. It's got play back and forth now. Um, I've noticed when I got home from this trip that on my frame, and I thought it was the SC1 I was using was like collecting belt dust and stuff, but I think it's just this, you know, grenading on me slowly. But it wasn't like that. I want to say this trip and maybe the last trip I noticed a little bit more belt dust than normal. So yeah, this is why it's important to check your clutches, you know, after every trip. This takes two seconds to take off. Yeah. You know, it's nothing to take off and check. Just check primary, it out, make sure everything's in good shape. Primary is a little bit more of a pain. We're going to pull that apart and we're going to check everything on that as well. So let us get started, gather some tools, and we'll go ahead and pull that off and uh, we'll see what we notice. Another thing to keep in mind too is this machine's got 3,000 miles on it almost, yep. and this is all stock stuff. Other than you know he did the weight kit on the clutch kit, yeah, yeah the clutch kit on it, yeah, but this is all stock stuff. Miles, yeah, 2,900 miles, faithful, no problems out of this machine. You know you you should be happy to get you know 1,800 or 2,000 miles out of a stock clutch. Yeah, let alone almost 3,000. And this hasn't exploded. You know a lot of them are exploding. Yeah, it didn't leave you stranded anywhere. Yeah, it's never been a problem. So I caught it. I have another trip coming up in a week. So I'm gonna try to get it back together. I ordered parts today. They'll be here Friday. So hopefully we can, you know, get it back together by the weekend or whatever. All right, so we got the tool on here. I'm gonna tighten it down. You got three torques you need to back out. This is a piece of all thread. I think Will bought this, but you could just make it. It's literally a 12 inch piece of all thread maybe half inch some half inch nuts two washers on each side yeah i'd probably just make it i wouldn't buy it again these are lock threaded so you or thread locked you need to make sure you put some thread lock back on them yeah, so you got a big washer and a small washer that's all it is and this is Ugh. Oh yeah, she's grooved out pretty good. I just washed my machine yesterday, and I finally feel the rest on it, and that's why I wanted to take it apart anyways, but I don't know what you think about that helix. Well, it looks a little worn, but not horrible. I don't think it's got a groove or anything like that, it's a little bastard, so right, yeah. I'm more curious what the inside of that looks like. Okay, so you got this spacer, let's see how that looks. Okay. 
This obviously isn't the stock this isn't spring. This is the factory yeah. spring. Just try to keep everything lined up. Looks in pretty decent shape. I mean, it's not horrible. I think the ears are maybe a ward, ward there, there, and. Well, those aren't too expensive. Maybe just replace that. Well, so this is all coming new. So, oh, okay. What I, what I ordered, ordered, will be what I ordered is everything here. The only mm -hmm. thing I don't get is the helix and the spring. So I get this, I get this piece. Mm -hmm. I just don't get the spring or the helix. So I have to reuse those two. Okay. But I'm pretty sure that the back, this backing plate with this bushing in it. Yeah, that's all gonna be new. Yeah, that all. So everything you see right here should be here Friday. Gotcha. Because um, the dealer does not, well, the, my guy told me that they don't sell these, which is the wearable part. They say they sell it all as one. But I found these, that AA and a couple other people had these three here, mm -hmm. these three here, and then, I don't know, I think there's six wearable parts in the primary, six or nine wearable parts in the primary that are plastic that it all comes in a kit for like 170 bucks or something so you can if you catch it early enough you can just change these pieces mm -hmm. and just hope that it doesn't eat up your inner inner half gotcha so i did use this as a dustpan earlier because i got a little irritated <laughs> and i swept all the stuff off my workbench right yeah. in here so you could see it in there but i mean that's not horrible but it is rounded yeah and I'm glad it is getting changed. Yep. So we will show you guys what the primary looks like next. So we're gonna go ahead and set this back together, and uh, we'll pull, we'll go over here and pull the primary. I'll show you how to do that. I'm not gonna go in detail with what size I used on this video. This is pretty straightforward. But just make sure you keep everything in order. The helix, you got a spacer, and your spring. You know, and then this collar will go back down over it like this, and. Make sure you use thread lock. See the blue? There you go. All right, so I pulled the primary bolt out. It's an 18 millimeter. And then uh, here's your puller. Put a little lube on your threads. Make it a little bit easier. Yeah, I think we've done this before in our other videos. We have. Yeah. But. Shock body is kind of in a way you have to pull on it a little bit, but you guys might notice my shock therapy ain't there anymore. We'll talk about that in another video. All right, let's try this. There you go. Now, in the other videos, some of them might have been a lot harder to get off. Once you get them off, they come off pretty easy. But the first time's kind of a pain. So go ahead and take this apart and show you guys what we got going on. Same thing with the other one. Just make sure you know you remember where everything goes and in the order it was in. So this will come off. You got a spacer here. Looks okay. Looks okay. Get springs aftermarket. Yeah, I got slide marks on it, but that's okay. Yeah, I would think they held up pretty good for the mileage. I've never changed them. Clean them a couple times. So this does not spin on anything. This is just like a tapered bushing. The crank is tapered as well. So once you torque it down on this, this does not move. It doesn't have a keyway or anything like a you know, like a flywheel, lawnmower flywheel or something. It just presses on there and it stays on there. So none of this ever turns. As long as it looks good and it's not like falling apart. It, you know, you're good. Like, this has got to come apart here. 
All right, so I don't have the tool for this, and I'm not going to buy it. Uh, probably save some money. Just I got to run the secondary back up to the dealer and drop it off for warranty. Hopefully they cover it. Um, they did start a ticket today, but I also ordered and paid for the parts just in case, just so I have them. They're really backed up over there. It's probably two months before I'll know anything, so I might be out of money for a while. But anyways, you need a special socket and a holder for this to take this apart. I'm going to take it over there and crack it, have them crack it for me, and I'm going to pull it apart. And the bearing, I don't know, feels a little goofy compared to Will's low mile uh, clutch that's just sitting here. Um, I'm going to pull it apart, check all the wearable stuff, and whatever's bad I'm just going to order tomorrow, and hopefully I can still have that stuff Friday. Um, but yeah, let's go over here. These look good, like I said. We'll go over here and look at the machine. I found a, <clears throat> this transmission seal looks like it's got a little bit of a leak. This seal here, when I pulled this off, was a little bit damp back here and it was collecting dust, which wasn't like that just, you know, say three weeks ago. So what I'm going to do is I ordered this part and you should be able to take a pick and pick it out of there and then lightly knock your new one back in there and that that's that'll keep your transmission lube in there you know you won't have no problems with that all right so here's where we left off yeah so a uh, few days later yeah i think what this was i don't know wednesday and now it's monday of the next week so took the secondary off i showed you guys where these were wore down and one side of each pocket was grooved and really wore down so I have a trip this weekend back to the dunes I needed this well I, I took the old one up to the dealer you watched us disassemble uh, and pull the spring and the helix and the spacer and everything out so the new one what I what I did is I ordered this and I dropped the old one off and had them start a warranty claim can't guarantee it'll get covered but I hope it does. If not, I paid out of pocket for now. It comes with everything except for the spring, which is my clutch kit anyways, the helix, and the spacer. So that's what you'll need. And you'll have to reuse your old bolt, which has got a spring delete, uh, snap ring delete too as well. So that's that. That's all new. Off camera, when Will wasn't here, I took my primary apart. This is a brand new primary. The only thing new, or only thing that isn't new, is my weighted clutch fingers, uh, cl clutch kit fingers, and my spring for my clutch kit. Everything else is, came brand new. All the bolts are new. But what had happened is I spun my one-way bearing on my old one, and it was a little bit noisy and really loose feeling. And I compared it to Will's stock one that we just took off three, four months ago. It probably had five or 600 miles. And it still felt nice and tight and ready, you know, good to go. So I wanted to change that. That was only like 40 bucks, not a big deal. Right here on each corner are three plastic slides. And they slide on this piece of stainless steel like shim here. That protects the aluminum here. So you would think that the plastic would wear down. Well. When I pulled it off, and I'm sure it would have been fine, but I had behind these fingers were wear marks on this big piece of triangle, this dri triangle piece here. And it was probably a sixteenth of an inch, very, very little play. I'm sure it would have been fine, but if I'm going to take this clutch of part, part that already's got almost 2,900 miles, might as well change that, I might as well change that and these three plastic pieces. Well, those three, plas th those three components that I needed uh, we're almost 400 bucks. There's still 2,900 miles on this half, this yeah, half, and, everything. and yeah. everything else. So for 600, you know, 590, I can replace everything. It didn't make no sense to me to yeah, spend buy the parts on the old one when this one, the other one, still had 2,900 miles on it. So I just bought all new. This is another thing. I still have the old one over here in the box. I have to drop it off to the dealer. And I have to make a warranty claim on that. And like I said, hopefully they cover it. Uh, he didn't give me much 
much hope. <laughs> yeah, much hope uh, that it was going to get covered because this. Oh, and this is the seal that's in the transmission behind the secondary. I noticed a little bit of seeping at the bottom. That, besides taking it apart to clean it, there was nothing wrong with my machine. I didn't notice anything. It drove fine. But I took it apart to clean it. And when I took it apart to clean it is when I noticed the seal had a little leak. So I bought the seal. So the we're going to show the seal was that. fifty-five bucks. I got obviously got a little discount on it, but you have to go buy one. It's fifty-five bucks, and you can just take a pick, which we'll show you, and pop it out, and then knock the new one in without doing any crazy work. So uh, that's where we're at. I'm going to spray the inner housing off with some brake cleaner, and uh, then we'll show you putting back the secondary and then installing everything. I was glad this came new too because it had little groove marks here and here. So it kind of works out pretty good. All the fingers are new, new, come complete. I mean, it was pretty decent. He thought about doing an STM or whatever, but for the price, he felt like he got pretty good life on the, out of the stock unit. I feel like I got really good life on yeah. the stock unit. Take the slack out of the bottom. When you have a deep well socket, it won't run out. You don't have to do it by hand, really. Yeah. Make sure everything slides together. We'll go ahead and put these on with some Loctite on it, torque them to spec, and then we'll show you guys the next step. All right, so I got a couple different picks here or whatever, but this seal basically just slides right in there and tucks right in that groove. So we should be able to grab it. Let's see, these picks aren't really the greatest, but... After giving me a hard time for all these years, he finally be, started becoming a Harbor Freight man himself. Uh, well, here, <laughs> let me get a different one then for you, bud. <laughs> Might have to break out the old screwdriver, though. All right, now that I put this Harbor Freight down, let's see if we can get somewhere with old snap on. <laughs> there you oh, go. Oh, snap on. Not no Harbor Freight there, bud. <laughs> And there is that seal. I don't really uh, see too much wear, but better change it. I've seen a little bit of lube coming out, so might as well get it over with. Let's see, where'd the new one go? There's the new one. It's already got some grease in here. Put some grease in here to where it'll slide. And I don't know, I should probably put some RTV around this. This so it seals it up. Let me grab some of that. All right, so I've got a little bit of RTV around it. The ideal way to do this would be to have um, a pipe that you could slide right over this and lightly tap it on, or not have an input shaft hanging out of it, but. We should be able to do most of it just like this. And you see how easy it is, so that's another reason why I wanted to put some RTV on it. Yeah. Kind of just seal it up. Yep. Seal it up and helps lube it sliding on her. I think that looks good right there. Yep. About so the same spot the other one was at, so. So then just make sure you, you know, wipe. Wipe it off because this is this bottom seal that goes on this shaft right here is just like a little flap, and if you put our TV on, it might make it hard and not uh, last as long or something along those lines. But that is that. All right, so we got the cover cleaned, got the new seal in, we assembled the secondary, 
it slid on there, put some thread lock on your primary bolt. I have a snap ring delete, like I said earlier. Make sure your stack's right. Make sure if you do have a snap ring still, I would probably just go ahead and delete it. That way you, you don't have you, problems. You could delete it. I did have problems uh, where the snap ring spun around on there so much that it, you know, caused it to have a rounded lip instead of a square. And uh, ended up causing it to pop back. And my machine was like doing something weird in Tennessee a couple months ago. And uh, since I, I got home and I found that and I flipped it and made it work. And then uh, Silver back up in Michigan had one in stock, so I just got it from them. And uh, I would do that. <clears throat> so then you can grab your primary. Where's the primary bolt? Did you not bring it with you? That's right here. Gotcha. So this has got spacers and washers too. So you got like an alignment spacer and a washer. And the crank is just uh, tapered, so basically just run that down, torque it down, torque that down, go ahead and put your belt back on, and uh, yeah, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe, you know, that helps us a lot, be able to make more content, and uh, we should have quite a few more videos coming up. COVID kind of slowed us down a little bit, now we're back out being able to, you know, go ride, so... We'll have quite a bit more coming. We've got a lot of big things in the works. A couple new machines also we're going to be kind of introducing here to the channel. Duck, probably doing some work. my rubber duck up there. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Tim's going to go ahead and send this thing next. So I'm Strapping that sucker down with some paracord, it's going to jump. <laughs> See you next time. Thanks for watching.